uh, we are going to solve a numerical example on effect of water table on bearing capacity so this is a very interesting problem the reason it covers all the cases all the conditions so here you see we have a strip footing and the thing is it carries a load of 400 kN per meter square at a depth of 1.2 meter in sand so the questioner has clearly mentioned the footing is rests on sand and the gamma saturated is given and gamma above water table is given shear parameters also given shear strength parameters cohesion and angle of internal friction now what is expecting from our side determine the factor of safety with respect to shear failure for the following cases uh, strictly speaking so what he is expecting actually he wants factor of safety so there is no need to think too much about uh, factor of safety with respect to shear failure here i have seen uh, the load acting load intensity of load acting on the footing is there 400 kN per meter square on the other hand on the other hand we can able to calculate ultimate bearing capacity we can able to calculate ultimate bearing capacity now you can see here so but the thing is uh, he has given different conditions that means uh, regarding location of water table water table is at 4 meter below the ground level water table is 1.2 meter water table is 2.5 meter water table is 0.5 meter water table is at ground level itself so use tejagi equation so because we can comfortably use tejagi equation because the given footing is a strip footing and the only thing is uh, we are going to discuss uh, we are going to focus on effect of water table so while we are computing ultimate bearing capacity for this strip footing this time Uh, our focus is on water table because you saw entire question is captured by water table each and every line is started with water table when it comes to uh, reading the question here you see the domination of water table is more in the problem so that's why you see we are also concentrating now see at the end of the problem we are going to calculate ultimate bearing capacity ultimate bearing capacity for a given condition by the load is given the load coming from the superstructure is given so ultimate by uh, act, load acting on the uh, load acting on the footing it should be actually what is our interest we are going to calculate factor safety if it is greater than 2.5 or if it is greater than 3 well and good well and good so once again i will tell you so a strip footing 2 meter wide carries a load intensity of 400 kN per meter square at a depth of 1.2 meter in sand so the saturated unit weight is given uh, 19.5 unit weight above water table is given so the thing is uh, they have given gamma set and gamma and more over uh, c and phi uh, determine the factor of safety so uh, there is no need to uh, worry about how to compute factor of safety factor of safety here is ultimate bearing capacity by uh, load originally acting so ultimate bearing capacity i can get from the jg bearing first equation the load acting on the footing is given load intensity 400 kN per meter square so let us what i say uh, do this uh, uh, use this formula q ultimate by 400 kN per meter square that is given in question so now what we are uh, trying to calculate is factor of safety for different conditions of what is a ground uh, that means uh, different locations of water table so let us start now here you see in this picture i have a footing you can see here the depth of the footing is given uh, let me show you once again the depth of the footing is 1.2 meter so 1.2 meter now width you can see 2 meter width you can see 2 meter so the first condition water table is 4 meter from ground level so let me tell you what table is 4 meter from ground level so if you see here it is 1.2 depth and the width influence is 2 meter so 3.2 you see the maximum extent of the uh, 
active zone of the foundation so beyond this from ground level so now the, the water table is very far from the base of the footing very far from the base of the footing and also from ground level so that means what we can write now what is rw1 and rw2 can anyone tell me now what is rw1 and rw2 if the water table is very far from the footing so please uh, tell me now uh, what is the uh, reduction factor values so i can tell you how to calculate ultimate bearing capacity cnc gamma df nq rw1 0.5 gamma b and gamma rw2 am i correct this is an equation to compute bearing capacity for strip footing if we, if the questioner is mentioned square footing you should you are supposed to write 1.3 year you are supposed to write 0.4 years so and also please remember this is gamma 1 this is gamma 2 okay so this is what the basic fundamental equation for to compute ultimate bearing capacity in case of strip footing in case of rectangular footing we have discussed one exclusive class on effect of shape of the footing if it is a circular footing here it is 1.3 multiplication factor and here we should write 0.3 so and if it is a rectangular footing 1 plus 0.3 b by l and here what i have to multiply 1 minus 0.2 b by l apart from rw1 and rw2 so now uh, anyone tell me now what is rw1 now and what is rw2 in case of water table is very far from the footing so please tell me now uh, what about the reduction factors uh, i can write the formula also 0.5 1 plus Z W one by this time there is no mistake it is depth of foundation maybe while I am writing fast I am committing mistakes point five one plus can anyone tell me what is R W two Z W two by Z W two by B so now these are the two reduction factors those we are going to uh, apply to the basic uh, equation uh, now uh, what about uh, reduction factors can anyone tell me so what about reduction factors the matter that i put work in in rana put matter that people are trying to speak something actually that is the habit of the student he will speak uh, uh, unnecessary things but he never speak a good thing so now uh, what about reduction factor now uh, work for table is very far rw1 is 1 rw2 is 1 now my question is what about gamma 1 and gamma 2 can anyone tell me what about gamma 1 and gamma 2 because water table is not there what i have supposed to use so let me show you the question here you see i have two gammas one is saturated 19.5 and other one is above water table 16.8 so what gamma we have to use now what gamma we have to use can anyone tell me so either 19.5 or 16.8 so I hope it is visible to you so what i have to use now anyone tell me 16.8 so now you see i think uh, i am not ready to disturb anyone i will carry my work now you see what a table is just at the base of the footing so now what a table is here that means uh, i can tell you zw1 is equal to df zw2 is zero for your kind and understanding zw2 is zero because what a table is at base of the footing this is base of the footing now jw1 is equal to df so one can guess now whatever rw1 and rw2 similarly can anyone tell me what is gamma1 and gamma2 so rw1 is how much 1 what about the rw2 point fine what about gamma1 gamma1 is gamma gamma2 is how much gamma2 is gamma saturated gamma2 is gamma such as because you see here you see within the uh, below the base of the foundation uh, the soil is submerged so these gammas you should use see here while you are working on this problem try to handle this rw1 and rw2 as well as gamma1 and gamma2 gamma1 means uh, whatever I would like to tell you uh, unit weight of the soil above the base of the footing gamma2 means uh, unit weight of the soil at the foundation at the base of the foundation immediately uh, below the foundation i can tell you immediately below the foundation so now uh, this is another case what we are discussing is 
what a table is at 2.5 meter what a table is at 2.5 meter so here you see what a table is at 2.5 meter so i can tell you now the w1 is equal to df so we don't care about uh, first uh, rw1 uh, because it is going to be one no water table so it is one there is no need to apply any reduction strictly speaking if you apply your common sense if water table is not there there is no need to apply any reduction factor so now what about rw2 so what about jw2 here you see in this picture the w2 is 1.3 1.3 because you see uh, the questioner has mentioned water table is at 2.5 meters from ground level then from base of the footing it is obviously 2.5 minus 1.2 1.3. Now, how to calculate R W two? 0.5, one plus one plus 1.3 by B. B. So, what is the answer now? 1.3 by two. Uh, it is about uh, we can understand without calculator 0.65, 1.65 by two. So, uh, 1.65 by two, uh, we will get it. No doubt, 0.825. So now uh, there is a situation came. Uh, I can select gamma one is gamma, but gamma two, as we yesterday discussed, how to calculate gamma two here now? Uh, gamma into 1.3 plus gamma sat into 0.7 divided by 1.3 plus 0.7. Here you see the same way BC Pinume has done. Uh, you can see the wedge term. Gamma will be taken as average unit weight. So see uh, how much extent we are discussing in classroom. Gamma average. So we are not wasting time. We are understanding books. So how to answer the question in a right way. So if a difficult question comes, now we are enjoying whatever we discussed. So now you can see RW1 here you see 1, whereas RWT is 0.25. Here gamma is 16.8, but here I am not ready to accept either 16.8 or 19.5. I can tell you in English. So now I am not ready to accept 16.8. Uh, I am not ready to accept 19.5. My value is between. So that's why I'm using weighted average because weighted average is not bias like the average. Average is having bias. Whereas weighted average, you see 1.3 meter, uh, the 16.8, the soil having 16.8 unit weight is covered with 1.3 meter, but only 0.7 meter is covered with 19.5. That's why this is called weighted average. W1, you might be studied in your water resources while you are computing rainfall intensity, P1A1 plus P2A2 like that. I hope you understood. It is very important. So if you have any question or anything you want to ask, you can ask me. Now you see, uh, we are moving to the next case. Uh, this is also a very interesting case. Now water table is at 0.5 meters. Water table is at 0.5 meters. Uh, so undoubtedly, what is ZW1 now? ZW1 is 0.5. No doubt, this is ZW1. ZW1 is 0.5. Now you may be interested to ask, sir, what about the ZW2? Sir, ZW2 is being zero. Here it is zero. Now RW2 becomes 0.5. Now I can able to easily compute RW1. RW1 is equal to 0.5, 1 plus 0.5 by, because here it is given in question, 0.5 meter below the ground level. You see, uh, it is a genuine thing. You see, you are, you are seeing what table is here. That means this entire portion is submerged. So uh, beneath, the, beneath the water table, this entire soil is submerged. So please remember, once submergence is there, we have to apply full correction. Full correction means 0.5. If no water table is there, I can take one. So now 0.5 by 0.5 by depth of foundation. It is with me, depth of foundation is 1.2. So there is no need to surprise here, you see, 0 0.708. This will be 0 0.708. Now one can see how to calculate QU, uh, gamma 1. So gamma 1 is now gamma average. Now gamma 2, there is no need to think too much. Gamma 2 is gamma set. 
gamma 2 is gamma sec whereas gamma 1 why i am taking average because i am not able to take a decision what a table is in between ground level and base of the footing so now there is a some what i say i need to take a good judgment then i believe weighted average now you, here you see 16.8 into 0.5 16.8 into 0.5 plus plus uh, uh, so now 19.5 into uh, 0.7 divided by 1.2 here you see the way uh, professor punima has done so now i am getting a value in between 16.8 and 19.5 so this is the way we need to answer now it's your time uh, let me tell you the last case when water table is at ground level 0.5 and for rw1 is 0.5 what about rw2 0.5 now my question is what about gamma1 and gamma2 so please tell me i will be gamma very set. happy Yes, gamma one and gamma two both will be gamma set. So this is very good reply we received from our friend. 